And if you got a red letter Bible, it uh, that that my Bible that's, that concludes the red letter part of uh, Acts twenty six. And so uh, I know we read it last week, but let's let's reacquaint ourselves where we're at, and we'll read verse nineteen through the end of the chapter again. Uh, verse 19 says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at, and at Jerusalem throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in a temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue this day, witnessing both the small and great, uh, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul Thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside and talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds, then said Agrippa to Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. So if you look back with me to verse 19, and uh, we've talked, uh, uh, like I said, I think last week, uh, maybe almost like a broke record in that I'm repeating this again, but the Lord still speaks. Are we listening? And Paul kind of gets at that in verse 19. Uh, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So in this vision, he was asked uh, or told, uh, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks there in verse 14. And uh, he asked in verse 15, who, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise... Stand upon thy feet, in verse 16, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, or, uh, and of the, those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people, from the Gentiles, and to whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins inherit and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Reminds me of uh, John 1, 11. He came to his own. His own received him not. Now he's sending Paul, the missionary, uh, who's just been saved, sending him to us, sending the gospel to folks like us. And he kind of asked this, King Agrippa, what else could I have done but listen to what I was told? You think about, uh, they may have well knew he was coming. And we want to remind you about what he was coming for. He had papers in hand to uh, drag Christians to Jerusalem. And more than likely, I was going to face the same thing that Stephen faced, and that's death. But the Lord had other intentions. So, again, uh, verse 19, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And uh, in other words, what else could I have done? 
The Lord spoke to me. What else could I have done? Well, uh, other examples in the Bible, he could have took off running the other way. Jonah did. I believe when he uh, was vomited out onto the seashore, I believe he landed and uh, was running to where God told him to go to begin with. So he, he said, I was not disobedient. In other words, uh, wouldn't you have done the same thing? If God had spoke to you, if the Lord had spoke to you, King Agrippa, what would you have done? Now, uh, so there's Jonah. Paul did what the Lord said. I've heard others uh, through the grapevine say, yeah, I ain't going back there. And so in reflection about, about why they wouldn't go back there, it was uh, our belief that the Lord got a hold of them. They didn't know how to react. Little Samuel nodding off to sleep. Samuel! He goes and wakes the priest up. What do you want? I can call you. He goes back and lays down. Samuel! So he goes back, asks the priest again. I ain't call you. Maybe it's the Lord. Samuel didn't know. The Lord never spoke to him. And maybe if we've never been listening, how many times God spoke to us and we were just too busy? Maybe we look for God in big things. Elijah comes to mind. He, he wasn't in the wind. There was a wind, but he wasn't in the wind. There was an earthquake now, fire now, a still, small voice. Let us never be too busy to miss the voice of the Lord. So, what did he do after this vision? Well, he went on to Damascus, as we well know, and uh, then to Jerusalem. That's where he met up with a fellow by the name of Barnabas and uh, Ananias, and later Barnabas put his arms around him and told him to listen to him because they was all afraid, and they had every right to be. Certainly, if uh church was looking for a pastor and to receive Paul's resume, that would be a tough sale. Oh, yeah, he was uh, one of the first deacons of the church. Uh, he was there when they stoned him to death, and uh, he allowed them to lay their coats down at his feet, and he, he was cheering them on. Didn't throw any rocks, but he, he was cheering them on. And, uh, you know, persecuted uh, people in the way. In the way of what? In the way of Christ, persecuted them. And with the same zeal he was doing that, though, though now he's doing other things in the opposite direction. So he presents to King Agrippa the gospel. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And during his speech, uh, Festus, I understand if Festus would have been in the state of Alabama on that day, he would have been breaking the law. That's what I've been told. I hadn't uh, looked up that particular law. And you say, well, what law is that? You cannot interrupt a church service in the state of Alabama. That's what I've been told. I hadn't, I hadn't seen the law, but uh, the fellow that was telling it was a lawyer, and I'm, I'm just going to take his word for it. Because uh, the way it came out was this young feller was wanting to talk, disrupt during church, and he, he informed him that uh, that was against the law in Alabama. So I'm just taking his word for it. But look what he said to him in verse number 24. So as he was uh, thus spoke for himself, Festus with a loud voice said, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning hath made thee mad. Now let's uh, see. That's King James Version. Uh, this sounds more grassy like here. Paul, you out of your mind. 
Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. And that comes from the English Standard Version. And the New American Standard Version says, uh, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you mad. I'm driving you crazy. Immediately, he gives an answer. I'm not mad. I'm not crazy, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Now, I want to remind, remind you that uh, Felix is, no, Festus, predecessor, Felix. His line was in Acts 24, verse 25, uh, Paul, you, you go on for now. And when I have a more convenient season, I'll call for you. Here, Festus interrupts. It says he's crazy. But he turns it back and says, King Agrippa, do you believe? You believe the prophets? I, I know you believe. King James Version says, almost, and that's where we get our hymn from, almost, you persuade me to be a Christian. Almost ain't good enough. If you got a different version of the Bible, it says uh, something like, in such short a time, are you going to persuade me to be a Christian? Or in sh so few words, are you going to persuade me to be a Christian? Well, it, it's simply this, the, the gospel in its purest form. Uh, look over with me to 1 Corinthians 15. And we'll start reading in verse number 3. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. There's the death, burial, and resurrection in two verses. Uh, I didn't know how to take this. <laughs> this happened, uh, let's see, Anna is fixing to be... 26, so this happened 25 years ago. I preached at this church, and they were talking to me about this, that, and the other, and uh, the uh, chairman of the deacons, who was also the chairman of the pulpit committee, got up and said, uh, I just want to read y'all what his uh, goal or objective is. And... Uh, I believe I had it wrote down uh, in so many words to make as many people like Jesus as possible through the preaching of God's Word. And uh, he said, short to the point, just like his preaching. And I don't know how long-winded that guy was before me or that was there. But uh, he said, he gets what he's wanting to say, said, and then it's over. Well, how long is that? How long does it need to be? He gave King Agrippa what was needed for salvation. And so many, maybe some of us, fully saved, thought, is that it? Yes. Christ lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. They buried him, and on the third day, he arose victorious over the grave so that you and I can have victory. So he says, King Agrippa, don't you believe? I know you believe. Um, and he, King James Version, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. And then, uh, kind of like verse 29, kind of sound, he kind of sounds like J. Vernon McGee, uh, when that preacher from down the road came and said, can't we get along? Can't we find some common ground? Can't we fellowship together? And J. Vernon McGee said, uh, well, this Jesus you preach of, virgin born? We don't believe that. He died on the cross and was right. 
Well, apparently then you are preaching about a different Jesus. Don't you want, don't I want, don't you want folks to know the Jesus that we know, that I know, that you know? That's what Paul says in verse 29. Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am. What? Saved. Knowing that heaven is going to be their home. Uh, in the English Standard Version, which says, in a, in a short time you persuade me to be a Christian, Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also that hear me this day might become such as I am, except these change. In the New American Standard Version, uh, Paul says, I, wish, I would wish to God that whether in a short or long time, not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am except for these chains. And you say, well, Paul wasn't long-winded. Well, you remember one night he got to preaching and he got, went after midnight and that feller fell out of the loft and died. And Paul prayed over him and uh, his life was restored. I think that was uh, back earlier in the, the 20s uh, chapters of uh, Acts, around chapter 20 or so. Verse 30 says, And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man do, doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Sounds like another fellow they talked about just a short time earlier, just a few years earlier, about 30 or so years earlier. His name was Jesus. This man's done nothing worthy of death. Who do you want? I can release you, Bar Barabbas the murderer. Oh, no. We want Jesus crucified. And uh, if you're going to release anybody, yeah, get, give us that Barabbas. Give us him, but crucify Jesus. Verse 32, then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appeared, appealed unto Caesar. Now, uh, whether whatever it is you have uh, drawn, uh, if you've jotted down the notes of why he's fixing to go to Rome, let me tell you the real reason he's going to Rome. The Lord told him he was going to Rome. Now, the Holy Ghost warned him, and other people warned him, oh, don't go to Jerusalem. Holy Ghost warned him, this is what's going to happen to you, you're going to be in chains. Uh, and then the Lord appeared to him. You're going to testify of me, you're going to be a witness for me, not only in Jerusalem, but in Rome also. So that's where he's headed. And uh, in verse 20, uh, chapter 27, We'll read uh, just a little bit down through there uh, this evening. Uh, probably won't get very far. But uh, if you'll look with me, to, uh, we'll, we'll take verses 1 through 5. And he's, uh, now, other times he went by foot while the others went by ship, but he's going to, to Rome by way of ship. And uh, we'll read verses 1 through 5, and we'll probably stop there. And it was determined that we, you remember what we talked about when it says we, uh, the great physician or the, uh, the good physician, uh, Luke, is uh, with him. When it, whenever it says us, when it says, here in this case it says we. And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners and unto, uh, unto one named Julius, <coughs> a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship uh, of, that's a nice word, at Ramathem, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia. One Aristocrus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, or Thessalonica being with us, the next day we touched at uh, Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul, 
gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. And when he, uh, we had launched from thence, we sailed into Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when uh, we had sailed over the sea of Sicilia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. So we're going to we're going to stop right there. Uh notice that although he's been a prisoner folks have been able to be with him. Now why was Luke with him? Apparently they needed a doctor uh, for the ride. And uh so Luke uh is here with them. Earlier, you remember his uh he was in uh prison and his nephew was able to come and tell him what was going to happen. Now, I, I hate to beat a, a dead horse, but do you reckon them 40 fellers that said we ain't going to eat until he's dead, do you reckon they've had any banana pudding yet, Mr. Karen? Or fruit salad? Or put them in a cheese sandwiches? Or biscuits? Jonna? Uh... I hope I hope they've had something because uh, that, that that was a tough thing to make that vial and then thinking that he was going to be dead in the next minute, next day or two, and here we've been for a while, and uh, I don't know if we're ever going to hear back from him again. I don't think we ever do. But here we we're leaving him here in uh, Acts twenty seven verse five. He's on a ship. Where's he headed? You say, well, the winds are up. Uh, remember what the Lord told him. You're going to be a witness for me in Jerusalem. You're going to be a witness for me in Rome. Uh, I've read different commentators that said that a lot of the Great Commission is carried forth in the book of Acts. Not all of it. Because there, there's still some folks that, that never have heard of Jesus. But uh just want to remind you about something. When, before Jesus left, he said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Paul's been there. In Judea, Samaria. Where's he headed to now? To the uttermost parts of the earth. Headed to Rome. What's he going to do there? Somebody said, well, he's going to be in prison. He's still going to be testifying for the Lord. So wherever we find ourselves, are we a witness for the Lord? Paul was. And he is in a lot worse places than I ever want to be. Uh, anything from anybody tonight before we close tonight? We appreciate y'all being here. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll, we'll close. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be here as we are tonight. I ask you to bless each home that's represented here. And Lord, uh, you have your way in our lives. Be with these, Lord, that we mentioned for prayer. So many, Lord, uh, are on their hearts. Even uh, maybe we didn't mention them tonight, but Lord, you you've placed uh, individuals in certain situations on, on their heart, and uh, Lord, you you know those needs. We thank you for meeting those needs, and uh, Lord, go with us, keep us safe, help us to be back next point of time to worship you again together in God's house. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.